if you were to go into another business or if you're going to give one piece of business advice um, for just someone not having context of the business that they're in, what would that be? Uh, for someone going into business for the first time uh, for themselves, um, yeah. uh, be, be in a situation that you can take the risk. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, note to self, always hit record before you start conversations because within the first three minutes of meeting you, Melissa, I've already gained so much and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I, I also want to give uh, Dave Anderson a shout out. He connected us. I know you're good friends with him. I know that you're working with him. And he just thought you would be an amazing person to bring on the show because of a couple things. Um, because of you taking a leap, because you living life with no regrets, because of you using certain financial strategies to make that life a reality. And uh, Melissa, I just want to thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee you up like this, and I, wanna I want you to share your story. But can you back up the statement that you are, in fact, the queen of pickleball? Uh, I can back that up all day long. So the first lady of pickleball, the goddess of pickleball, the queen of pickleball, I, uh, the hardest working person in pickleball. Th these are all titles or, or things I've heard heard people call me <laughs> and, and by all means we're going to use them all in the in the title to to be like pickleball now in full disclosure my i was telling you this before my grandpa loves tennis and is in the tennis hall of fame in high school coach and just like remarkable human being i i love love him to death and um he just transitioned over to pickleball in the last couple of years and uh so i've always i have a i don't know what pickleball is but i think it's like a smaller version of tennis and I've heard it's very addicting. Um, and so you'll have to give us some context on that. But, but why don't for the listeners um, who don't have context on who you are, why don't you give them a little bit of your origin story and, and share like before Pickleball, a little bit of who you are and then like what had to happen to you making the leap to uh, being the queen or first lady of Pickleball. All right. Well, I'll do my best to do that in a time frame um, that doesn't cover the full six years of, that I've been on this pickleball journey and uh, how I began uh, that journey. So um, I'm originally from uh, Texas and I joined the military out of high school and uh, I thought I wanted to be a nurse or a doctor. And uh, so and the military allowed me to have money uh, to put myself through school. Uh, I found out, um, I don't know, about eight years into that journey. Um, that I really didn't want to be a nurse or a doctor. And so uh, I was actually a fellow corpsman. I was in the hospital corps, which is like a licensed practitioner nurse in the civilian world. I had met him. He was getting out of the Navy, and he had uh, gotten his um, certification with Microsoft and had landed a job in uh, Northern Virginia, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. Keep in mind, I'm living in Southern Maryland at the time. And uh, the Navy, once I joined out of high school, took me out of Texas, and I never came back home uh, after that other than to visit. And so I got involved into computers, and my first job was with electronic data systems, uh, which was a Ross Perot company. And if I got to be honest, if uh, EDS didn't sell to Hewlett Packard in 2008, I'd probably still be at EDS today. I bled EDS blue. Uh, strong culture of a company um, that eventually led me uh, to uh, meeting Dave Anderson. Uh, you yep. know, I transferred from DC down to uh, Pensacola, Florida, and he and I uh, partnered together to deploy a consistent office environment for the military. Um, through my career, um, EDS had, was mentoring me, if you will, helping me uh, be promoted up through the corporate ladder, uh, helping me with the skill sets I needed to be able to, to, to make that journey. And then I ended up uh, getting promoted and moved out to uh, Phoenix, Arizona uh, to work with American Express. And I was in charge of the global service delivery uh, for our account supporting American Express. Uh, and again, Hewlett Packard then um, buys EDS and I just didn't uh, fit in that culture. It was more of a products culture and EDS was a services culture. Uh, American Express was certainly about services and I ended up getting the biggest compliment uh, anyone could get supporting their customer and American Express wanted to hire me uh, to come and be their delivery executive director, if you will, in charge of infrastructure. So I went on to be the uh, director of the global invoice infrastructure for American Express in Phoenix. And while I was there, I played tennis. Um, you know, a lot of people that find their way to pickleball uh, find, come from tennis, right? 
like your grandfather. And so I was out playing tennis uh, one evening and a uh, lady on my tennis team said something about her dad being a national pickleball champion. And I said, wait a minute, <laughs> what did you just say? Uh, because we played pickleball in our driveway in Texas. My mother still lived there. So we would go home for Christmas and for hours, the family would play pickleball. So I thought it was our secret driveway game, right? Yeah. Uh, so she says, oh yeah, she says they have this huge national championship in Buckeye, Arizona every year in November. She says, you should really check it out. And so I was living in North Central Phoenix. Buckeye is on the west side of Phoenix, as is a place called Surprise, Arizona. So I went out to start checking it out and I could not believe what I saw. I saw there's active, so there's in Arizona, it's the largest retirement community in the world. And I saw all of these seniors, you know, 50 and over uh, playing pickleball on real pickleball courts. Wow. And I couldn't believe it. So I called my mother back in Texas and I said, mom, you're not going to believe um, what's happening out here. I said, you and, and Bruce, my stepfather, I said, you guys should come out here and check it out. So they came out and uh, checked out the pickleball and, and other amenities. And, you know, I hadn't lived near my mother in 21 years. And uh, so I wanted them to come out. And so they went back home and put their house up for sale. Um, so my mother's a huge part of the story because, you know, I'm working in American Express. I'm putting in a hundred hours a week. I'm, you know, playing some tennis. Uh, and so she comes out to Arizona and starts um, uh, getting actively involved in pickleball. And so uh, she's winning gold medals, you know, and um, just having a blast with it. Uh, she she uh, had asked me if I would come play in a tournament with her. Uh, this was in April of 2014. And because her normal partner went out on a cruise, right? So I'm like, well, I guess I can do that. So I play, I get in the tournament with her. We win silver. Wow. And um, the tournament director, as he's, you know, donning the medal on me, he says, I just want you to know your mother usually gets gold. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's a low blow, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that would get me going. <laughs> <laughs> so there, uh, so with that, the, the, some of my mother's friends who had a invitational group, if you will, on Sundays, where they just invite ladies to come out and play, ask my mom, would Melissa be interested in coming out to play? And um, I said, sure, why not? They had a group called the Heathens because they played on Sunday. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, well, I guess I can still participate, but I'm still going to get in my worship in the morning before I get there. <laughs> and um, so I went and played and there was a lady there. This was May of 2014. There was a lady there by the name of Jetty Lanius. I'd never met Jetty, uh, didn't know Jetty. Um, I, I did, uh, she, she asked me what my brother and I at the time were doing with pickleball because he and I had been in some discussions uh, about perhaps opening up our own pickleplex is what we were calling it, pickleball complex um, uh, in Texas or maybe Florida. We didn't know. We were just discussing it and uh, that type. And so I told her what we were doing and she said, well, my husband uh, and I have this software called pickleballtournaments.com. She says, it's something that's been a hobby of ours. And now that hobby is turning into a business and we're in our 60s, we're retired, we don't want a business. Uh, would you and your brother be interested in looking at it? And so we said, sure. Uh, we found ourselves the very next month in Southern California at a real life tournament, uh, evaluating the software. And I knew right then, it did not matter how much computer knowledge I had around an online tournament management system, I was going to have to learn what it meant to run a tournament. My brother knew all kinds of things about running brackets. I had no clue. Uh, so I began teaching myself. We evaluated the software another three months, and then we decided to purchase it uh, from Mr. Lanius. And, um, and life has never been the same. I went to my boss at American Express. Keep in mind, I'm the director of all of the infrastructure. Okay. Right, that's, so that's a big time job. It's a big time job. I had built a significant corporate career for myself financially doing very well. I told my mother I wanted to walk away from my corporate career. She about had a heart attack. What year is this? This was 2014. Okay. Okay. So this is, this is somewhat recent. You're, you're crushing it in the corporate world. You get this software, you love pickleball, and you just have this feeling of like, we're going to do this. Why? Like, did you see the money side of it or did you just, were you unhappy or like, what made you make the leap in 2014 to leave something really, really amazing in corporate America? 
Well, I, so I'd been in corporate America almost 20 years and, you know, I'm always grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunities, uh, the people that mentored me, the people that uh, supported me, worked for me, the people I got to train and groom. But I tell you, corporate life is difficult. I mean, you're working a hundred hours or so a week. I mean, I'm sleeping literally with one eye open because I'm in charge of the operations for the infrastructure. And that was taking a toll. And so, um, you know, it didn't become more so the money was great and I was uh, happy for the things I could do with that money, uh, but there was a lot missing in my life. Um, no quality of life, if you will. It was all about the work. Going on vacation meant getting up two hours before everybody else to get your emails done um, so that you could still spend your family time staying up two hours after everybody else to get emails that had come in from the day. You could never really disconnect, right? Um, and so when uh, the pickleball opportunity presented itself, it was scary, but the part I was about to tell you is when I went to my boss at American Express and told him about what I wanted to do, I couldn't have been prepared for his response. His response to me was, Melissa, he goes, I want this to be successful for you. So how about you stay on as a consultant part-time to me and I'll pay you your full-time salary. Um, I about fell out of my chair and I, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, many people have said to me, Melissa, that's, uh, uh, that's was done because of the value that you, you know, gave to the company. You were that valuable uh, to be able to continue. And so for the first three years, I did both. I worked um, as a consultant for American Express while building the pickleball tournament business. And that uh, consulting uh, basically allowed me to have a safety net, if you will. Uh, financially to take that kind of leap. Uh, I did not know what was going to happen with pickleball. Um, I, I've never really known um, anything. I've not been like this visionary that just knows something's going to explode into something. It's more like being called to do something uh, and you just go with it. And it, it, I was very late in my 30s, early 40s, uh, before I realized what that calling was about. Um, when I moved from Pensacola to Phoenix, um, I did not want to be there. I did not realize that at the time. I did everything I could to try to open up other doors to leave Arizona. And I can tell you, every door was slammed, slammed, slammed. And I spent about four years feeling somewhat depressed, if you will. Mm. But it, it was four years into that transfer that the pickleball opportunity and door opened. And I realized at that time that it was no longer... Uh, what I could um, make happen or what I could control or what was within my time. Um, I went through a very um, uh, lengthy journey uh, learning about um, what God does in our lives and what uh, it's about his time, not our time. And I had a significant growth journey through that. And my life through pickleball and through my spiritual journey completely transformed my life. And pickleball has given way more to me than I could ever give to yep. it. And, you know, it, it continues um, to, to guide me uh, through my life. So some people, when we moved, it was because pickleball, uh, arguably now, but at the time, Surprise Arizona was the pickleball capital of the world. And some people very much still consider it that. Uh, I built my, uh, you know, career there. Uh, my very bestest of friends there, supporters, everything are there. And uh, a little over a year and a half ago, we made the decision to move to Hilton Head, South Carolina, which is where I am now. And the pickleball world was stunned. And they're like, they, they were surprised. Yeah, I, I need to meet this pickleball world. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is, how many people are members? Like, I don't, can you, can you break down what pickleball is? I mean, we mentioned a little bit, it's like the smaller version of tennis. Um, mm -hmm. Is it, is there a lot of people like in these organizations? Yeah, so pickleball, so people will describe it as a combination of tennis, um, badminton, and ping pong. And some people will call it, it, when they see it being played, it looks like people are standing on top of a ping pong table playing pickleball. And you're playing with an oversized paddle and what um, uh, people relate to as a wiffle ball. Oh. And um, there is an organization, a governing body uh, called USA Pickleball uh, that oversees. There's about 40,000 members um, part of that organization, uh, but there's over um, three 
a million people uh, today playing pickleball. There's an International Federation of Pickleball as well that's focused on international growth of pickleball. It's exploding around the world. Uh, the goal of the IFP, if you will, International Federation of Pickleball, is to get the sport into the Olympics. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of initiatives, uh, initiatives around youth pickleball, uh, a lot of junior programs. Uh, there's some collegiate programs, um, all designed uh, to help you know, build a, a pipeline of younger players um, that will continue to keep the game growing as the baby boomers, you know, eventually, um, um, you know, phase phase out of the baby booming phase. I I am going to play this year, and yes. when I do, I'm I'm gonna shoot you a picture because I'm okay. I'm like I'm sold. I uh, are you a good ping pong player? I'm all right at ping pong. I'm a better pickleball player. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, sometime we'll have to we'll have to play ping pong. You should uh, ask Dave how that went for him. Um, he oh. was he was he was all talk until the game actually happened and he'll he'll Did laugh you at that. Him? Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, oh, because he's like a ping pong champion. Well, we're 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 a competitive uh, group at Better Wealth, and so we uh, <laughs> I I am so far to date undefeated on the show, and that's I'm only I'm like flirting with fire because I um some someone like you is going to come along and, and smoke me. But um so anyways, this this is super fascinating. My analytical brain wants to go right into like what you did, what were the steps that you took when you, 2014 to, to go, like, go about building? It was, it's my understanding that you also exited that company as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I want to go through, like, what, what did you do day one? What was the mindset? I also want, like, when did you start working with Dave financially? In 2003. Um, oh, wow. So 17 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, Dave was a counterpart of mine. Uh, he took uh, at uh, Pensacola, um, supporting the Navy. Uh, he left his government career after 16 years, which was a very brave thing to do, um, especially in a small town. And he ventured off um, into doing finance, uh, financial management. And um, he had a big vision and he knew that there was so much more he could be doing with his talents to serve, right? Yeah. And yeah. so if he doesn't do that, um, it, and then um, me having someone in a position of managing finances and helping people grow financial wealth, if he doesn't make that change in his life, then I'm not sitting here where I am today. And, and I want people I to hear that. It. Yeah, I want people to hear that because it's like, listen, if you get your money thing figured out, you can empower people to impact and live their life and, and have an amazing, like, like you are, the amount of people that you're impacting and the smiles that you're bringing are like incredible. And, and a lot of times we overlook some of the work that happened in 2003. I mean, I, I just, and I also, that needs, I need to be reminded of that because this is a journey. And I know for myself, I get really like, I want things to happen quickly. And I, I know that this is a journey. And, and one of the things that we got connected over is like, I wrote a book called The And Asset. It's ironically all about whole life <laughs> and <laughs> overfunding it and then using it um, to borrowing against it to do other things. And I think, I think your name got brought up because you're a perfect example of that. Like you yeah. have, have, have used the strategy and now you are the pickleball queen. Um, and it's just, it's just a cool story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it did. It started in, in 2003 uh, with a whole life policy. I now have two of them. Uh, and I was pumping as much as it was legal to pump into those um, as I was working through my corporate structure. And so it gave me uh, some some financial freedom to take a risk like what I took. And, um, you know, ultimately uh, allowed me to uh, use some of the wealth that I built into the whole life. Uh, to make other decisions uh, around pickleball, uh, you know, three years in uh, to, to it, I had, was no longer working at American Express. Uh, now I was living off um, what we were making. And when I say we, my brother and I who were in business at the time, uh, but we were growing so, so fast um, that we were literally only able to focus on keeping the operations up and running, but nobody could focus on the growth and the vision for the future. Uh, so I was fortunate, um, it's uh, been two and a half years ago, uh, that a company called Pickleball Central, which is the largest online retailer for pickleball. So when you decide to get your paddle and any other accessories, pickleballcentral.com, um, they had approached me uh, about, a, um, about an acquisition and they were very clear in that acquisition that um, I would need to come along with that. Um, and so I was so thankful because at the time there had been lots of private investors, other companies that had approached me uh, about um, purchasing a company, 
but I had a responsibility, if you will, to the legacy uh, to, of Mr. Lanius, who, by the way, is now in the Pickleball Hall of Fame for his efforts in developing pickleballtournament.com uh, to carry their legacy forward in a way that they would be proud. Uh, and it wasn't until Pickleball Central came along that I was like, this is a company that shares my same core values uh, and is a company that uh, would be good to partner with. And so, um, so through that acquisition, um, and that was in February of 2018, I was able to take some of the financial uh, wealth that I had built in my whole life policy uh, to then uh, fund what was a buyout to my brother um, who then stayed on with us for another year, and then he uh, transitioned on to go do other things. I took my um, uh, piece of the company and, and invested it into Pickleball Central and became one of five owners of the company and stayed on to be the president of PickleballTournaments.com. Melissa, you are a prime example of what we teach. And so hats, hats off to you. It's, it's the, the financial side is just the foundation. You had to make it. Like you had to like, use your creativity, work hard, build relationships, and have those values, which is very clear that you have all of the above. Um, but it's super cool. It's like, that's exactly what we're teaching people is be in control of your money, invest in yourself, have clarity in what the future looks like. And it's amazing what happens when you can control capital. Um, I'm, I'm curious, um, just going back to day one when you left, or you didn't leave um, American Express, but you, you kind of in, informed left employment and was a consultant. What did that look like? Like, what did you do and how did you, what did those four years, like, how did you grow so quickly where then you've made a, a great partnership? Um, like, what were those four years like? Because a lot of people listening to this might be in a situation like that you were in um, mm -hmm. or are like in the process of building a business and they might be frustrated that they're not getting traction. And it sounds mm -hmm. to be like you guys were just doing everything just stay afloat like <laughs> it was going crazy and so I, i'm just i'm curious like my business mind is like curious what are the things that you did or did you already take over a business that was like thriving yeah so no we took so at the time of 2014 um there were 93 tournaments using pickleballtournaments.com okay now my brother also had a very successful corporate career and so he had some um, financial wealth, if you will, that he was able to help invest into the company. So between the two of us, we were able to use some of our own money to then fly around the country, literally, and help tournament directors be successful. So we're building our brand, we're building our reputation, um, and we're, we're building uh, trust, if you will, uh, as we go around and help tournament directors put on uh, successful events. And so as we're doing that and our reputation is growing, keep in mind Pickleball is a very small market, we're really the only ones at the time that are offering this service and this capability um, uh, that it just kind of went like wildfire. So, you know, from 93 tournaments uh, that year to 130 the next year to 250 the next year to 400, you know, the next year. And last year, we ended at 748 tournaments running on pickleballtournaments.com. And we were uh, set for 2020 to be even another record setting year. Um, but as everyone knows, we're in a pandemic and the event business has pretty much come to a halt. Um, we did run 10 tournaments uh, in June um, and we have uh, about 14 tournaments that are running in July. But keep in mind, you know, we're running about 50 tournaments a month um, typically. So those numbers are, are really down. And so um, between, you know, our efforts and, and really being the, the peop only ones in the market uh, at the time, uh, that helped the growth. And then the fact that pickleball is such a social sport, it's easy to learn. Um, you do not need a person who's not family when you come into pickleball they're the best people in the world and literally i i've been around the country being hosted by people i didn't even know as i was coming in uh to run events for them i mean i've had some people have me come in their home and they weren't even there and leave the keys to their car yep. they don't even know who i am so it's 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 fascinating you can walk up to a pickleball court much different than a tennis court and you can just walk up and ask about the game and somebody's going to put a paddle in your hand and welcome you onto the court and start showing you how to play. There's no other sport that I've seen like that. Um, so it's cost effective, easy to learn, social. There's lots of health stories about pickleball saving people's lives. There's lots of stories about uh, people losing their spouses and their pickleball family stepping in and saving their lives. They just had wow. no desire to continue to go on. Um, that's how life-changing this sport is. 
it is a life-changing sport. It's a sport that you can play for all ages. You know, grandparents are on with their grandkids. Um, and with equal skill, you get on that court. It doesn't matter the age. Um, yeah. you, you'll have a lot of fun. With um, the demographics of pickleball, are, is it tend to be more older? Or are you now you seeing like it average, average out? Yeah, it's getting younger all the time, uh, but it is still primarily uh, people playing are 60 and, and over. But again, getting much younger, there are now professional pickleball uh, tours um, happening wow. in the U.S. and people are being paid to play pickleball. Uh, it's um, getting closer to the place where some of these professionals can just play without also having to do teaching and camps and clinics and that type of thing. Um, we have very large events um, in Naples, Florida is one called the US Open Pickleball Championships. There's 60 dedicated pickleball courts there. We were set to play in April um, and uh, have 2,500 players playing. And I was really excited because one of the other really cool things I get to do is I get to broadcast for CBS Sports Network um, for pickleball at the US Open. And we were gonna be live on television this year. And oh, it was going to be a first, right? And uh, so that didn't happen. It's delayed till 2021. We also run a huge event um, for the USA Pickleball Association in Indian Wells, California uh, at the Indian Wells Tennis Garden, which is uh, considered the sixth major for tennis. Uh, and so people getting the opportunity to come and play in that facility is huge. That also brings over 2,000 players uh, into, into the tournament as well. And, you know, it's not unusual uh, for tournaments to be 700, 1,000, 1,200, you know, players. We started the Atlanta Open uh, three years ago. They started 200 players, 400 players, 600 players. And this year, um, even still, we're playing in September, we could see close to 1,000 players. How is this pandemic going to affect the industry? Do you think it's going to help um, or is it going to be go just go back to the same or is it going to hurt? And here's my mindset is when you do look at historically pickleball has been more of an older like and I know that you're seeing younger and younger each year. Or do mm -hmm. you think you think with the pandemic that's going to cause people to never go back? What are you guys seeing from a um, like a like being the overlook of what pickleball is going to be for the future? Yeah, so from an industry perspective, it's been very interesting because you're now finding people that are um, playing, you can play pickleball at home in your driveway, in yep. your cul-de-sac, yep. right? So we're seeing people um, by nets, we're seeing people who did not have time before to even check out pickleball are now at home, their, their friends or their family are playing in the cul-de-sac and driveway, they're coming out and playing. So we're hearing all kinds of stories where people who didn't consider playing were gonna come into the game. And so even though the event business um, has taken a hit, um, uh, from a competition perspective, from an overall industry and growth perspective for pickleball, I think it's actually helped in cases. Yeah, I, I totally see that, by the way. And like, for instance, I, after talking to you, I like want to go play pickleball. So can, like, I can tell why you're the, the first lady of pickleball, because now you're like, you're like recruiting me uh, <laughs> in, into the sport. So great job on that. Um, I, I want to ask one more question as it relates to business. If you were to go into another business or if you were going to give one piece of business advice um, for just someone not having context of the business that they're in, what would that be? Uh, for someone going into business for the first time uh, for themselves, um, yeah. uh, be, be in a situation that you can take the risk um, and, and be courageous to do so. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've met a lot of people who've told me, Melissa, I'd love to do what you're doing, but I can't because, you know, I, I've got kids and I've got, you know, got to put them through college. I just don't have the financial freedom uh, that you have. I'm, I'm single lady, not married, don't have kids. And so, um, you know, I was able to make decisions that other people my age, I, you know, I was 44 uh, years old at the time. Um, that other people couldn't make. So um, I would say assess your risk um, and can you live with those risks um, if you're not successful. And I just want to plant a seed for the people listening to this or watching this on YouTube. It's make like design your life today to potentially say yes to something five years from now. And it's like that's 100% true. And that's what I love about your story. It's not it's like you really started preparing in 2003 and maybe even before that. And it's yeah. just really cool to see how that whole journey has, has happened. Um, remarkable, Melissa. It, it's, it's, I, I'm like inspired and, and fired up. Um, going back to, I want to ask a couple more questions before we, we finish off. How, how would you define wealth? Because I, I really feel like you, you have a different perspective and I like it. 
Um, in, in, in your life, how would you define what wealth is? And our company is called Better Wealth. And so how would you define better wealth? Yeah, and you know, so because and, and I often say, uh, say that people define success differently, right? Because some people uh, can drive up to a big, big, fancy home and, and, and they see success. Me, I see a lot of money and a lot of work, right? And so for me, I define it in a very uh, broad perspective. And uh, wealth for me comes from um, being happy. Um, being able to live a, a quality life, um, having the freedom to, to do that, but understanding that it also takes money um, to, to have those things. Um, but, you know, how much wealth um, do you need to be able to have a, a quality of life? And quality for me is defined by purpose. Um, how can I fulfill my purpose um, while having a, a balance of, of um, you know, what it uh, means to also have created uh, some wealth in order to be able to have that balance. Um, so I don't think of wealth as just money, uh, Caleb. I, I don't. I define it more about how I'm wealthy when I'm, I'm fulfilled internally and when I'm, when I'm happy. And by and being happy is, is through fulfilling a purpose. And I've also found this when I've done things for the you know the right reason and and from the heart of a servant um, that's filled around um, a, a, a drive to fulfill a purpose. Um, the the financial piece is kind of taken care of itself. Um, God has put people in the right place at the right time uh, into my life. You know, Dave Anderson being one, um, that at a, at a young age, I was 32 when I met Dave, um, that was able to then help set me on a path that would, as I got older, uh, would give me some flexibility and freedoms that at the time I had no idea that I would need. And, you know, even before Dave, I was fortunate to have some mentors that as soon as I started, uh, you know, starting my corporate career, it had me, you know, putting money into to pay yourself first, right? So pay yourself first, then, uh, then pay everything else that you need to pay. So they helped start that with me early. Even my own mother, I mean, she's been such a huge impact on my life. When I was 16, she already was instilling in me the importance of building credit. I had my first credit card when I was 16 years old, right? Yep. And so, um, you know, I've been fortunate in that regard. So wealth is much more than money. Uh, it's also, it, it's people, it's purpose, it's happiness, it's fulfillment, um, and, and it's intentional, right? I know you talk about uh, living an intentional life, and as much as I can, I've been very intentional. I talked to you about, um, you know, uh, how much I, I tried to control everything and tried to keep everything simplified in my life, and in my late 30s, I, I realized that um, I couldn't always do that. And once I realized that and let go and, um, you know, just went through the journey for what it was, was supposed to be, I mean, I was enriched in ways I just can't explain in words. Yeah, I, I'm going to purposely end sooner because I want people to re-listen to, to that answer. And I just want you to know that you articulated better wealth, better than, than most. And I, I thank you for living that out. And thank you for like really being in touch on what that looks like. Um, Melissa, the last question that I end these shows, episodes with is what I call the legacy question, which good luck trying to top your last answer, but you can try. Um, and, and it goes like this. If this was your last day and you were with the Pickle family uh, community, uh, the yep. people that you love the most, what would you share um, about your life to them to better them off and like what would you want to make sure that you passed on before or before you left well i would want to thank them for the seeds that they planted uh, that i was then able to harvest and then plant my own seeds and i would want to thank them for giving them or giving me the opportunity to lend my talents and my skills to serve them to help them then be successful in everything that they do. Um, and through those efforts, I mean, I, I've worked with other people who've now left their jobs and, and uh, have created their own tournament management companies. And, you know, some of them will tell you, you know, that if they were talking to you on, on your show that uh, uh, I was a huge piece in, in helping them have the courage and, 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 you know, providing them an opportunity for the own seeds I had planted uh, that then let them come on to the pickleball journey as well. I, I love it. Thank you so much. How can people um, find you? How can they get involved in pickleball? Like, um, what what's kind of the call to action to yeah. to if you're if you're inspired right now? Right. Well, you can find me at pickleballtournaments.com, um, and you can also email me at melissa at pickleballtournaments.com. 
And if you want to learn all there is to know about pickleball, be sure to visit the governing body's website at usapickleball.org or usapa.org. And I want everybody to send me a picture of you playing pickleball. We will make sure to highlight that. You can email me uh, info at betterwealth.com. I will, that will make me laugh, make my day. Um, and, and Melissa, I'll make sure to send you pictures as well. I want to uh, see it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and I really appreciate you being on here. All right. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.